Chapter 1. Awaken. As we enter the final stages of God's dealings with mankind, we realize that we also have entered into a time of gross darkness upon the earth. This darkness is resting upon the godly and ungodly alike. It is, literally, an inability to see or perceive. This is a huge jeopardy for those called during this time because it's not that difficult to lose your sight. We know that within the world there exists very little perception, yet the promise and the reality for the sons of God is that this is to be a time of increased light. Proverbs 4.18 But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. When Judas went out from the presence of the Lord, the word says, And it was night. This had nothing to do with the time of day, but rather the darkness that fell over Judas and his inability to see any longer. It has become night across the face of the earth, and few are there who see this or even understand how deep the darkness has pervaded mankind. However, it is a time of clarity, sight, vision, deep understanding and transformation for those who have been marked for this time. Each day it's yielding forth greater and greater light, for the day star continues to rise in the hearts of God's sons during this time. Increased sight and vision both come with a caveat. The sons must reach in. They must appropriate. They must know the time of their visitation. They must walk as the wise virgins. This day of light does not come to the unprepared, nor to the casual seeker of truth. It comes to the sons who ardently pursue after the Lord and who have prepared their hearts. Now, more than ever, is a time of Hosea's prophecy. Hosea 6, 1, 3. Come, and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. And after two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain under the earth. As we press on to know the Lord, he comes to us as the rain, bringing forth the maturity so needed. The reign of the Lord brings maturity, and this is the time of the final maturing of the sons. With this in mind, this book is being written to issue a call to the sons. It is time to awaken. It is time to rise up. It is time to remember. For this is your day. This is the day for which you have been made. We will start this word by reviewing three very special scriptures which point to a provision and an experience awaiting the sons during this time. Isaiah 60, 1 through 5. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you, and nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about, and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons will come from afar, and your daughters will be carried in the arms. And then you will see and be radiant, and your heart will thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. Isaiah 52, 1 and 2. Awake, awake. Clothe yourself in your strength, O Zion. Clothe yourself in your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean will no longer come into you. Shake yourself from the dust. Rise up, O captive Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the chains around your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. These scriptures deal with the spirit of transformation and the initiative that rests upon the wise virgins concerning the changes or transformation coming forth during this time. The concern has never been for Christendom as a whole, nor for the world of unbelievers, but rather the scriptures have spoken of the jeopardy facing 
the virgins. And who are the virgins? Those who have not defiled themselves, those who have not played the harlot, those who have the mark of sonship upon their foreheads. Are we speaking of church here? No. We're speaking about the sons, about those who have been called out and marked for this time and for this destiny. You will most likely not find them within church circles, for they've been led outside the camp for some time. They may gather together, a group here, a group there, but organized religion as we know it is not the womb of sonship during this time. What is the common thread with these scriptures? Simple. They saw and were radiant. The mark of sonship, as we've mentioned in our book, The Manifestation of the Sons of God, is the perception and capability of spiritual sight that rests upon God's sons. They're not blind. They do not have the mark of the beast or the mark of the darkness that so heavily rests upon this age. They have spiritual eyesight. They're able to see. And they will not be found lacking during this time, for they comprise the wise virgins. How are you clothed in beautiful garments? According to Isaiah 52, you must first awake, and you must secondly shake the dust from yourself. You are living this now, for your sight has been progressively opening up, and in seeing, you are able to clothe yourself in the beautiful garments which have been prepared for you. Simultaneously, you are letting go of the filthy rags that have clung to you. You are shaking the dust and the remnants, both of this age and the remnants of the soul, flesh, nature you have walked with. Sonship will come to completion through a people that can see sonship. They can see the Lord. They can see the provision. They can see the heavenly garments that have been prepared for them. And in seeing, they can finally and completely become. They will be fully clothed. They will see and be radiant. They will put on the Lord, and that is a very personal experience. This will not be experienced on a corporal level of the body. It will be a very individual experience as the preparation of heart and spirit is completed. How can you gauge this change? By virtue of your capacity to see. More than ever before, we face a time that the iniquity has finally come to the full within the earth. We have reached a point of critical mass, and the change is slated to happen, will no longer be withheld, nor can they. Too many of God's sons are yet asleep. The final stages of change that are coming forth are predicated upon an ability to see, or the estate of the alertness or wakeness an individual has. How are we clothed in robes of righteousness? We are clothed because we are able to see these robes of righteousness. We are clothed for we have risen from the slumber that is upon all mankind. We see his righteousness and we become it. We see the garments of spirit, the newness of life which has been set aside for us, and we possess it. It is impossible not to be deeply concerned for those of God's sons who are yet asleep. For the judgment that is coming is not a respecter of persons, and this we know. Twice now the Lord has withheld the judgments of the Father upon the sage. This time there shall no longer be a delay. The sons may not have been ready, but from this point forward there shall no longer be a delay. As patient as a husbandman has been for the precious fruit of the earth, his sons, this delay or season of patience has come to an end. James 5.7 Revelations 3.3 3 speaks of this timeline. So remember what you've received and heard and keep it and repent. And therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I come to you. To whom does the Lord speak here? Does he speak to the ungodly? No, he is speaking to the virgins and the call is for them to awaken so you have the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. And you can read that if you like, but most of you know this. Of the virgins, those whom God has called, you have those who have prepared their hearts, and you have those who have fallen asleep. This is a concern, for there are many yet of his sons who have fallen asleep, 
but it is time that they must awaken. We are quickly approaching the culmination of days, and the preparation is not complete in the heart of many of his sons, yet the judgments will come forth. Even if they awaken, there must be a quick work done within their hearts, for they will yet need to discard the contamination of the flesh nature that is still clung to them. Will there be casualties? Yes, there will be. It is not what we would want, but the Spirit has seen, and we understand that some may not make this transition, nor be ready, as this time unfolds just before us. The intercession before the throne is for his sons to awaken. Awake, O sons, for the time is at hand that you must see, for no one can walk you into this new day. Neither good works nor good relationships will benefit you, for your entrance into the kingdom is a personal and individual experience. Revelation 7, 1-3 After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth so that no wind would blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. Revelation 7.3 is an interesting scripture, one of which we must have recently passed through, for the impending judgments would not be allowed had this scripture not been completed. And even though this scripture has found a level of fulfillment, it does not necessarily guarantee that all of those sons who've been called and sealed will necessarily make this initial transition that is before us. The doors closing make haste. This is our prayer, and this is our intercession, for what we see unfolding over this next period of time has with it a sharp ring of finality.